God. I'm feeling so blessed, so happy, so privileged right now to know Jesus. Amen and amen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Have your way, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God. Amen.
much to be thankful for this morning. We have so much to be thankful for this morning. As I was downtown yesterday in Ottawa, I just saw how much worse it's getting down there. If you've been down there in the market lately, wow, it's getting bad. This world, it's getting bad. But we are so blessed and so lucky to have Jesus in our lives as our guide, as our light, as our direction. We are so blessed to be able to come to church in the mornings, to even feel it in our spirits, like we need to be at church, like we need to hear the word of God, like we need to worship and give God thanks. We are so blessed because there are so many people out there struggling, so many people, this world struggling, and that's why God has called us to speak truth, to speak wisdom, to speak light, and to go to those highways and byways, and to change and to touch lives. But in order to touch lives, we need to be in line with God, in line with his spirit, in line with his word, knowing what he has called us to do, knowing what is good and right and acceptable before him. So let's just take this time to thank the Lord. Whatever you came in here with, whatever cares you came in here with, leave them at the feet of Jesus because he's brought you here. He loves you so much that he has brought you here today. So leave your cares at his feet right now. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord God, that your spirit has led us to be here and place it upon our hearts, Lord God, to be here and give you thanks and to worship you, Lord Jesus. Help us to be that light. Help us to be that change, that impact that the world needs, Lord God, that our neighbors need, Lord God, even if it's just our neighbors, people to the left, to the right, in front of us, at work, in our homes. Lord God, help us to be that light. In Jesus' name, we ask and pray. And Lord God, we pray for the preacher that whatever they say might, might be of you, Lord God, and that we will leave here changed a little bit closer to you, Lord God. And we ask that you just bless this time as we're here, Lord God. We want to stay in your word. We want to stay in your truth, Lord God. We want to stay in this moment, in this moment of worship, Lord God, because it is so precious, Lord God, to feel your presence. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Have your way in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Welcome to each and every one of you this morning, to uh, visitors and returning visitors and everybody online. We're so happy that you came to worship with us today. So we welcome um, the Father, uh, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, we, um, and we give thanks to uh, God, Father God, who is the creator of everything. So we're just so happy that we can assemble together to give our worship. It says in um, John 14, 27, peace I, leave, peace I leave with you, my peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Today in a world in crisis where there is so much um, trouble, heartache, suffering, pain and deception, uh, we can experience uh, true peace, the true peace that comes from God. And our security is found in God and God alone. We do not need to be afraid. We do not need to, to be afraid. God is with us. We hide ourselves in the Lord. And he is our true peace. The, the peace that people proclaim is not real peace, but we can experience that true peace in our lives as we 
walk um, in our daily lives. So let's keep our eyes on Jesus. Let's keep focusing on him. Bonjour um, à tous ce matin et à tous ce matin. Nous vous souhaitons la bienvenue dans la maison du Seigneur où nous sommes venus pour donner notre louange, adoration à Dieu et pour lui remercier pour tout ce qu'il nous a donné. Nous accueillons nos visiteurs et, et ceux qui sont en ligne avec nous aujourd'hui. Jésus dit dans Jean 14, 27, « Je vous laisse la paix, je vous donne ma paix. Je ne vous donne pas comme le monde donne. Que votre cœur ne se trouble point et ne se larme point. Aujourd'hui, dans un monde où il y a tant de problèmes, tant de troubles et de peurs, de douleurs, de souffrances et de déceptions, nous trouvons notre paix et sécurité en Dieu. » Gardons nos yeux sur Dieu. Buenos días a cada persona esta mañana. Les damos la bienvenida a la iglesia para dar nuestra alabanza, adoración y gracias a Dios, el creador de todas las cosas. Damos la bienvenida al Padre, al Hijo y al Espíritu Santo. Damos la bienvenida a nuestros hermanos y hermanas que están de visita y de regreso. Y los que están en línea, bienvenidos. Jesús dice en capítulo 14, versículo 27, Jesús, Jesús dice, La paz os dejo, mi paz os doy. No os la doy como el mundo la da. No se turbe vuestro corazón ni tenga miedo. Hoy en el mundo donde hay tantos problemas, miedos, dolor, sufrimiento, engaño, podemos conocer y tener la verdadera paz y seguridad. La paz y seguridad que se encuentra solo en Cristo. Sigamos confiando en Dios. Que Dios les bendiga. Well, well, well. Welcome everybody once again to church. We are here to worship the Lord, to give him praise and honor and glory. God is good, God is great, and his mercy endureth through all generations. Uh, the song said, what a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him, saints on earth adore him. What a mighty God we serve. And we can, the thing about our God, we can serve him anytime. It doesn't matter what the weather condition is, whether it's a storm or a thunderstorm or a hurricane or an earthquake, we can praise our God anytime. We can give him honor. We can give him glory. Actually, God desires of us to praise him right around the clock. And that's why you notice sometimes uh, on our side of the globe, when it is night, it is day on the other side. And when it is day on this side, it's night on the other side. The reason why God created the world this way, 
So praise will continually coming up to him. Everybody will be awake at some point. Humans will be awake at some point in time to offer a praise. We ought to praise God. He, he placed uh, the firmament, the planets in the firmament uh, to remind us of him. Amen. The moon testifying of God. The sun testifying of God. And all the other planets, they are testifying of God because no humans could ever put any of those planets up there. This is by divine reasoning, divine power, why we have all these planets up into the sky and they are there for specific reason and specific duties that sometimes man trying to capture, but it remain unknown. So what we can see, we see. Uh, we see the trees, but we don't know where they come from. <laughs> we see the bodies of waters in the world today, but we don't know where how, how it made. Water is very peculiar, but God placed all these things in our in our universe so we can enjoy them and live. Amen. Welcome. We today it's a great day. It's raining, and it's beautiful when it's rain. Um, because somebody say whatever come down from above is blessing. Well, rain is one of them. And we just want to ensure that we give God thanks whatever he's showering down on us. Amen. Praise God. Today we have a, there's a little song I have in my mind I would like to sing. I don't know if the musician can help me with it. And it's called, Shower Me With Your Blessing. Amen. Shower me with your blessing. So those of you who know this song, you could help me sing it. And if you don't, just sing along still. <laughs> amen. Sing along still. All right. So, amen. Mm, let me try it. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Do. Can I say it one more time? I'm coming from somewhere. Do, 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 yeah. Do, 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 yeah. Lord. Send down the rain, yeah, Lord, we need the rain, put it on together and sing along, yeah, Lord, send down the rain, hallelujah. Lord, we need the rain. Shower me, shower me, shower me with your blessing. Shower me. Shower me, shower me, shower me with your blessing, oh Lord, send down the rain, hallelujah, Lord. We need 
the rain. Lord, do you need your blessing today? Send down the rain. We got to ask God for it. Yes, sir. Lord, we need the rain. Oh, say it again. Lord, send down the rain. Hallelujah. Lord, we need the rain. Yeah. Shower me, shower me, shower me, shower me with your blessing. Father, we thank you today, Lord. Thank you for the rain that you showering down on us today. But there is another rain, God, that we need from you. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. And it's, it's, it's that spiritual rain that will lift us up from where we are. Oh, some of us, Lord, are in different sp space in mind, different place in our heart right now. But Lord, we know if the rain from heaven, that spiritual balm in Gilead, balm us with the heavenly spiritual empowerment, our mind will be at a different place. God will be together as you, you want us to be. Come together, assembling ourselves together, seeking from you. When Adam, hallelujah, reached Canaan, Oh, yes, sir. That, that, that place that you promised him and said, look up into the heavens and look at the stars and, and as many stars as you can see, that's my blessing to you. But yet when he got to Canaan, he said he's looking for another country. Oh, yes, Lord. Another place, another Canaan, which is not built by humans, but built by God. Father, we know we are getting the water. Father, we know we are getting the water for our crops uh, and, and to water our land and water to drink and, and, and keep us, Lord, uh, fresh. But, Lord, we need the spiritual rain that will forgive us of our trespasses and sin, that will bless us with your power, oh God, to witness to others who are in darkness and to live our life holy unto you. We pray for the showering today. In Jesus' name, amen. And amen. Praise God. Shower me with your blessing. Tell your neighbor, I want God to shower me with his blessing. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Wave your hands to a couple people across from you. And you don't have to leave your seat. But just wave your hands and say, I need God to shower me with his blessing. Say it as many times as you want. done? <laughs> Amen. I need the blessing from heaven. All right. Got your Bible with you? Turn to Matthew chapter 20, I mean Matthew chapter 19 and we will read verse 26. Matthew 19, 26. Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Did you want to repeat that to yourself? Amen. Praise God. So, I have a very unique topic to speak on today. I'm sure you hear it all the time, but um, inspired to speak about this topic in a very interesting way. I say it interesting because I've take some time to study this topic and to look into it and to understand it a little better and to interpret it to you today. 
And as we do so, that the Lord will inspire us as we go along. So we'll get our shower of blessing. And the topic is, miracles are still possible. Repeat what I say. Very good. Miracles are still possible. Amen. So the question is, what is miracle? What is a miracle? So miracle from the dictionary is an extraordinary event that is that is commonless, that is uncommon. It's an extraordinary event that is uncommon or commonless. Um, you haven't seen it regularly happen or taking place. It's once in a blue moon. For example, the pool at Belsada, the pool that Solomon built, God turned it into a healing Gilead, a bombing Gilead. Solomon built it to use for his personal ledger, but after he died, God take over that pool and use it for divine purposes. So what would happen at the pool of Belsada or the pool of mercy, periodically the angel of the Lord would come down and trouble the water. So the water started boiling up or bubbling up. And the first person that jumped in or stepped in would be made whole. Only one person per trouble, water. Now nobody could really understand how this happened. It cannot be explained. So a miracle is not something that can be explained scientifically. You know it is by divine power. So a miracle is usually by divine power. I know you have what you call magicians that attempted to do miracle in their magic work. But if you talk about magic, you got to do something to get the outcome. You got to do, spin your roll, etc., etc. <laughs> Hard court one to four. But <laughs> miracle, magic is something you have to do, and there's an end result. Miracle, you don't have to do anything. Don't have to lift no straw, don't have to count, you don't have to cast lots. You just look to divine, the most high God, for that to take place. All right? And some people call their psychics magician or that they can work miracle because they go to them for psychological healing and information. So they walk out, feel like they know everything. But still there's a higher power that knows just what is taking place. What the magicians are doing and what the psychics are doing. And all the other elements of spiritual influence in the world. The God we serve know exactly what they are doing. And why they are doing it. And how they are doing it. And he can defeat it. Good example. Moses. In Pharaoh's palace. So Moses showed up and told Pharaoh. God said to let my people go. And Pharaoh said I ain't going nowhere. And Moses said, all right, let's have a little time here. And have a little discussion about this. And Pharaoh magicians came in, was, were in the palace and realized that Moses must have had some kind of a power to become into Pharaoh and demanding that he let the Israelites free. So the desire to have Moses show them what he had. So they throw down their rods and their star, their staff, and it became serpents. Mm, that's magic. They did something. Moses also had no clue about the piece of stick God gave to him or his rod or staff. He, by faith 
And by in, being instructed by God, because God told him he's going to make him a God to Pharaoh. God told Moses that. He's going to make him a God, lowercase g, to Pharaoh. And he threw down his rod, and his rod became a serpent as well as the magician's serpent. But what happened? Moses' serpent hit up all the magician's serpents. That was astonishing. That was amazing. So the power of God, the miracle that comes from God, is greater than in any human's magic. And you better believe it. All right. So, miracle can be defined as less kind of God's activity in which he arose people's awe and wonder and bears witness to himself. So that is the biblical and the best explanation of miracle. Because miracle cannot be explained. Can anybody explain what happened in Pharaoh's palace with Moses throwing down his rod and it became a serpent as well and then head up all the other serpent? Can, can that be explained? That was God's divine power taking place in Pharaoh's palace. So miracle is best defined as less kind of God's activity in which he arouses people's amazement and wonder and it bears witness to himself. The definition takes into account of God's providential care when we speak of miracles whereby God preserves, controls, and governs all things. So, what is miracles to humans is a normal activity for God. God is not amazed at what he did or do. It's a normal process for him. But to humans, it is they have never seen it before, and this kind of activity is not common. So they are amazed. Wow! I can't believe it. Another definition is God working in the world without that human said miracle his. That God is working in the world without using means to bring about the result he wishes. Yet to speak of God working without means leaves us with very few, if any, miracle in the Bible. For it is hard to think of a miracle that came about without no means at all. So, you ever hear the means to the hand? The means to the hand, what is that? Means to the hand is an activity or a process done in order to accomplish a goal. When a person described as a means to the hand, it means that another person is using them as expedient tool to get what they want. Means to the hand, I use you to get what I want. I said I love you because I want something from you. But deep in the heart, there's a greater demands of you. Meetings are boring, some people said, but to get work done, there are, there are necessary means to the end. You know some of you have go to work, and you have to call that, 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 that morning uh, meetings and, and, and motivate the staff of what the day's activity is going to be and what the marketing structure it's like today, and everybody has to ring in a certain amount. Anybody work in those marketing environment? I used to work in them. <laughs> I used to work in the bank, and obviously, you, you have these meetings every morning, motivating you. We have some new products here. We need to let inform the customers of these new products. Or uh, there's a, I, I know my wife works somewhere where there is a, 
competition to, 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 to introduce new product to people within the staff. So in order to get the, those product out in the, uh, in, the, in the marketplace, the means is to, have, is to have a meeting. So the meeting is a means to the hand to encourage the, 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 the workers to ensure the information is being unveiled to the customers. Now, love is valuable not for what it is in some, for some people, but rather for what it can bring. The act of loving may not be an end in itself, but it is certainly is the means to the ultimate end. It is the key to eternal happiness. So, means to the end. So, loving somebody could mean a lot of things to somebody. Why are you loving this person? What is the end result? So, that is always in the mind when two people say they are in love. They are figuring out, okay, what is the end result here? What am I getting out of this relationship? What is in it for me? And those are some of the wise questions you ask when you're moving into a relationship. Get to know the person and ask questions. Because after you get married, you can't ask them again. <laughs> it's hard to ask those questions. Ask them. Figure it out. Ask some questions. Now, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life through Jesus Christ. So what is the end result of God loving us? The means is love. The end result, we have eternal life. So God have a means to the end because God wants us to come back to him in relationship. It is not the intention of God to totally annihilate humans from him because he created them. It is not on God's plan that humans be totally alienated and destroyed. There will always be a handful left over. Even a handful of humans left over. He's going to spear some of us in, on his judgment day. Not everybody will be cast away into the lake of fire. That is not God's plan. That's why he sent Jesus Christ into the world. To be the sacrifice for sin. That at least some of Adam's fallen race will return to him. Because God loves humans. He loves everything. He loves the animals. He loves all those. Everything God. He loves what he created. Because in Genesis he said, whatever he created, he said, that's good. He loves it. Perfect. But humans, they are the closest creative being to God. They can think, they can rationalize, they can love, they can hate, they can move around, they can talk, just like God. The only thing that God don't walk on the surface of our planet that we can see him, he moves in the clouds and speak as he moves. You ever read through the, the Bible when God was speaking to Moses and the Bible said the cloud that God was moving back and forward and God was speaking to Moses. As the cloud keep moving. No wonder why you see we Pentecostal preacher. When we are preaching and the spirit begins to move. We can't stay in one place. That started with God. <laughs> he walked in the garden of Eden. As he seek to speak to the first family. Thinking they could hide from him. So the means to save us from total domination. God love us. In the healing of people for example. Some of the physical properties of sick of a sick person's body were doubtless involved as part of the healing. When Jesus multiplied the loaves and fishes, at least he used the original five loaves and two fishes that were there. And when he changed water into wine, he used water and made it become wine. But not only that God can use the physical properties that we have available to work miracle from them. He can also work miracle without physical properties. 
Because he's God. But for the miracle to make sense to humans, there has to be physical properties from which the miracle will work. So for example, there had to be a Red Sea that was a barrier to God's people for him to work a miracle. So that's the property. The Red Sea was the property. That God used that very same property to work a miracle. He could do something spiritual that we could never see, but it would not make sense to us easily. Just like in some of our Bible study, and somebody would say, I don't understand that. It's difficult. That's it. So people need to understand how God works his miracle. And so God used physical property. The man with the withered hand. Jesus could not have healed a man with the withered hand if there was not a man with a withered hand. He is the physical property. The blind man. Jesus could have not healed the blind man unless there was a blind man. With, with eyes that need sight. So you are here today. You are the physical property of God. And if you are having difficulties. That your doctor tell you it cannot be solved. Why not turn it over to God. Because you are already a physical property that God can use to glorify his name. Lazarus. The, the sisters, when Mary went to Jesus and said, our brother is dead. Well, Jesus can't raise a dead man unless there is a dead man. So there was a dead man buried for about four days. And the, Jesus showed up and said, show me where you lay him or where you bury him. <laughs> Have you heard Jesus? Are you presenting yourself to God today for a miracle? Oh, somebody worship. Oh, praise God. Are you presenting your situation to God that you, you do not understand? Even your idea about God is, is becoming difficult for you to understand. You're just going through the action. Are you ready to present your property, your body, as a living soul before God so he can start working on you? Is it vexation? Being upset? Mad? Are you ready to represent those emotional distress before God so he can work on it? Think about it. This is the kind of message I got to take my time. I will, I will lose you very quickly. Have your way, Jesus. For God, all of us are properties, are his properties. And he knows more about us than we know about ourselves. He knows when we are smiling that deep down we are mad. You ever get the, the, the skin teeth smile? I just want to chew you up. <laughs> we call it plastic smile. You ever get them ones? Yeah. So, so God knows deep beyond that smile what is going on. That's a property to God. Hate is a property to God. That person walking with hate is a property before God. And that property can be fixed because he created it. God can fix the tree. He can turn a bitter tree into sweet if he wants to. But there has to be a tree. That's why he created all things. So for his glory. You remember when Mary told Jesus that her brother is dead? Jesus delayed for another day or so before he went there. Because he wanted to glorify God. He wanted to glorify God through the difficult thoughts of humans. You weren't making it easy for them. Because it's going to take a miracle to bring back Lazarus to life. And God, Jesus went and said, show me where you laid him. And he said, Lazarus, there is a property. Somebody worship. Humans aren't vapors. Humans are real properties of God. Lazarus, come forth. One. Lazarus, come forth. 
two. Lazarus, come forward. Three, got to go to the three. One day I'll preach about the three stuff. Very, very powerful. That three counts, it's very powerful. And Lazarus came out of the tomb. Jesus said, loose him and let him go. And guess what? As I was studying the scripture, Lazarus was at a meal with Jesus after he resurrected from the grave. How many people would sit with people raised from the grave eating? <laughs> Listen, man. <laughs> a lot of people don't want our loved ones to die. Correct? But let me show up at one of those funerals and call the person to life and just watch how you would react. Just, I would just call the person I would stand back and watch you. Oh my goodness. Sorry. So sometimes you wonder why people are crying. Maybe they just miss the immediate relationship. Sudden gone of this person. But a lot of people you, you couldn't deal with it. You couldn't handle the truth. So Jesus has to speak specific time. When he knew there is a need for that individual to come back to life. There's a real purpose in life for that person. Like Dorcas, glory be to God, and who died. That woman was active in church. So, and, and make garments, and people love her in the community. She should make the chickens clothes for the children, and clothes for everybody, and she died. And they sent and called Peter. Now, now that miracle power is now given to the church. So they sent and called Peter. And Peter showed up. Peter showed up to, with, with one mind to raise Dorcas from the dead. There was a dead body, property. <laughs> Got to be a property for a miracle. The unknown property, only God can deal with that. But for humans, there has to be a property for a miracle to work through that property. And Peter said, where is Dorcas? She's, she's upstairs. And Peter asks everybody to leave the room. Because we can't have no doubters. When miracles are going to work, nobody else is involved but the power of God. We have nothing to do with miracle. Oh, somebody worship today. Nothing to do with miracle. It is God's divine power at work. And the end result cause amazement. Ah, wonders. It's a sign. And Dorka says, my little Peter went in and said, rise my little one. <laughs> you got to make sure, folks, if you want to call people from, from, from the grave, the, the person who is doing the calling, he, even that person has to make sure you're ready for it. Because that can scare the juice out of you. <laughs> when, although you are the person working the miracle to call a dead person back to life. That's something very scary. You got to make sure you are in tune with God to ensure that you are in the rock of God when that power begins to unveil upon that dead person. Because you yourself would run. <laughs> I could remember. <laughs> this is interesting. Let me get some water, folks. I'm taking my time today. There was a crippled man I was praying for. <laughs> I can't remember if it was church. Probably it was church. And the man was in his wheelchair. And then I'm praying for this man to rise up. And I was serious. <laughs> and, and then it looked like the man make a move to get up. And I got scared. <laughs> I got scared. What is he? And then the man just sit down back. So <laughs> he, he never bothered to get up. So, but I was in, like, I, I was just turning it over to God for that miracle to work, to glorify God. But it seemed like I wasn't ready. I, and God don't want to let his servant look embarrassed. So he sit down the man and said, you not ready for this, Des. So I, the man was actually getting up and I, and I started, whoa, whoa, whoa. I got scared, so the man just sat down back. Now, 
There's another man we were having baptism. And another man came there, we were all crooked, and he, 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 his fa he walked with his face down to the ground. But somebody brought him to the baptism. No, this is reality, folks. I'm not making this up. There, anybody here remember? Yeah, I got a witness. And they brought this man here to the, to, to the baptism. And uh, the way he never come to church, but somebody invited him. Is anybody here who invited that man? I don't remember. Okay. Oh, the lady you invited her died, right? Inviting him died. Yeah, he and his wife came, are our, his our support. It was his wife. Thank you. So the, he was able to push the man down in the wheelchair as far as the pool. And at that point, I said, don't bring the pool in the water. Let him come. Hmm. That's another time I was really engaged with, with the Lord to do something. Something powerful today at the baptism. Though the man bent and walked down with his face to the ground, he came in the water, baptized him in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, and said, get up. And that man came out of the water, walked out straight. Now, that was a miracle. Anybody remember? Amen. He never come back to church. Maybe he got scared too. But I wasn't scared at that moment because I really was in it. I wanted God to do something. And I believed God was going to do something in that water that day. So I was more in tune for that miracle than the one in the wheelchair. Oh, oh my Lord. So miracles still happen. But the, the, the person who is asking of God for that miracle has to be in, in relatedness to God. Wrapped up, tied up, and bungled up in the move of the Holy Spirit. So when that miracle is taking place, you, the axer, for the individual is not scared. But ready to see the power of God unleash. Somebody worship you. Are you ready for your miracle? Oh, praise the name of God. Praise the name of God. Oh, glory. There are seven miracles... That Jesus performed while he was on earth. And every one of them there was a property for the miracle to work through. It doesn't work in vapor or vain. Well, what are some of the miracles that God worked where there were no property? The heaven and the earth. There were no property for it when God created it. Amen. He created that. The sun, there was no property for that. God spoke the planets into existence. Word, by his word, the planets came into existence. So you see, God is, is the ultimate power of miracle. But for humans, we would never understand how God spoke the planets into existence. So that is hidden from us. But what God wants us to know, he allows us to know. So there was, Jesus turned water, changed water into wine. John chapter 2 verse 111. Healing an, of, of, of an official, of a, of official son at Capernaum. John 4, 46 to 54. Healing of the paralytic at Belsada. John 5, 1 to 15. Walking on water. For Jesus to walk on water, there has to be. Amen. There has to be water. Healing of the blind man. For Jesus to bring sight to a humans, there has to be a blind man. John 9, 1 to 7. Raising Lazarus from the dead. There got to be a dead Lazarus. John 11, 1 to 45. Healing and other miracles are still taking place in the church today. Miracles are still taking place. One of the biggest miracle and the greatest miracle is human being saved. Amen. Tell your neighbor what I just said. One of the greatest miracles that takes place in the world today is salvation. 
it is it, it, it is unknown as to how the Spirit of God work in a person's heart and turn him to God. It cannot be explained. Oh, a wicked person, a wicked and perverse person can actually depart from that wicked and perverse way and turn to God to live for, live unto him godly. Good godly character. Rowan. That's a miracle. How I got saved is a miracle. No human could save me. And put a song in my heart. In the way I experience it towards God. Salvation is a miracle. Jesus died. He laid the foundation. But for the person. To say I'm a child of God. Sincerely. And making effort. To accommodate that calling of God. It's a miracle. And it is the greatest miracle. Don't always look for dead people coming back to life. Just look at you. And look where you had been. And what you've been through. And how God lift you up. How we turn you around. How we put a song in your heart towards the divinity. Hallelujah. And you can sing to a divine being that you never see. And there's a praise coming out of you towards a divine being you cannot touch. But you know he's working on the inside and the praises are flowing up to him. That's a miracle, folks. Even you saying glory. Even you saying hallelujah is a miracle. Because it is a language the angels use. And we on earth here are using the language of, an, of the angels in heaven. Hallelujah. And praises to God. It's a miracle. Is there anyone today want to, to experience that salvation miracle? You know you've been witnessing to a lot of people for many years and they're still not turning to God. They need that miracle. It takes miracle. Jesus said these kind go, go not out but through fasting and prayer. Sometimes fasting and prayer work. Because it's as, it is very powerful. You may fast, you may have fasting and prayer for a miracle, and you can have fasting and prayer for to, to that people's faith Hallelujah. will launch in God so whatever their needs can be solved. There's a faith prayer, and there's a miracle prayer. So there is a faith prayer. Amen? And there is a miracle prayer. But the salvation of humans is a miracle. Whether you believe it or not. Don't you ever think, oh, I read the Bible and I, I, I like what I see, so I turn to God. A lot of people read, even the devil read the Bible. You remember the devil repeating the scripture to Jesus? You shall give his angel charge over you <laughs> to keep you from dashing your, your foot against the stone. Satan knows the scripture. Doesn't mean the miracle work in him to be saved. For he can't be saved. And those who follow him can't be saved. But those who escape from him can be saved through the moving of the Holy Spirit. Have your way, Jesus. The miracle that God performed is a kind of working power that no human can explain. Only God understands what just happened. But we can pray for miracle. Amen. We can pray for miracle. What is the means to the hand in the scene in Lazarus? The death of Lazarus was a means to glorify God and the Son and His Son Jesus Christ, being glorified as well. So the death of Lazarus was a means to glorify God. And Jesus, isn't what the Bible said? Read it out. The death of Lazarus was to you be used as a, as a means to the hand. That is, it was to be used to glorify God. That people will know that God is still involved in their fears. And that his son who is carrying out the work will also be honored. So God calls us to do some things in people's lives so he can be honored. 
And sometimes you can't believe you actually did it for that person. When you can't believe it, it's a miracle. When you can't believe it, then that's good. <laughs> Matthew 19 and 16. There is scene two. So scene one. God used the death of Lazarus to glorify him. Scene two, Matthew 19, 16. The scenes open up with a young man coming to Jesus, asking him what should he do to inherit eternal life. And Jesus responded by examining the young man's situation so as to make plain to him what he meant when he said he wants eternal life. The young man replied to Jesus, I keep the law. I'm in good standing with the law. But Jesus said, that's good. Now, one more thing. Sell what you have. Give it to the poor. And then come follow me. And you will have treasures in heaven. And follow me. And the young man can't say, no, can't do it. Can't sell what I have and give it to the poor. Can't do it. And he walked away sad. So for this young man to have rich young man to have eternal life, he would have to sell. That's the means. Right? What he have and give it to the poor. And he, he refused to do so. So he did not see the end result of experiencing eternal life. Or have an eternal life. He walked away sad. Couldn't, couldn't do it. You know privilege. Grow up being privileged. Luxury. Can't see himself without. What he has. He walked away sad. But after Jesus. Making a thorough examination of him. He said it is easier. For a camel. You see the miracle taking place here now. To go through the high of a needle than a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. Now, I, the, is, the, the, the argument here, what I understand that Jesus was using, uh, you can parallel it to this traditional way in the land where Jesus came from. Is that people journey, they journey on their camel back or with their camel. And when they reached to the city, those cities used to be fortified with great walls. And for you to go to some of those cities, is like a little hole. They made the gate very small. And when you go through, your camel is not, can't easily go through the hole. So the camel, you have to have your camel to stoop down and guide it through the hole. Now, the high of a needle is a very small hole. But for people who are tied up and bungled up with their treasures and earth, they find it very hard to let go of it to serve God. It is very difficult. You remember I said for many of us who are saved today, it's a miracle. It would take a miracle. That's what Jesus said. For a rich man to be saved and enter into the kingdom of heaven. Or for that matter anybody. It's a miracle. But for a rich man, it is even more a miracle. Because he has too much to lose. Not knowing he has much more to gain. Amen. There's much more to gain than to lose. When you receive Christ in your heart. Why don't you experience that miracle? Praise God. What was possible for the young rich ruler. Was salvation. And he walked away from it. Because he would not follow the instruction. You got to follow the, in the formula. In his case, you have to give up everything. For you and I who are poor, 
All we need to say by simple faith, Lord, forgive me, have mercy on my soul. Done. I have a desire to walk with the Lord. For a man who have a lot of stuff, he got a lot to take. You remember the man who is, the, the, the guy who Jesus called to be his disciple? He said, I got to go bury my father first. It's not like his father was dead. But it was customary like that the, the bigger son take care of, it, of the father. Right? And take care of the asset he has. And he's telling you, well, I got to go to put things in order first. Make sure my father gets a good burial. I got to stick around with him first. And Jesus, you know, let the dead bury their dead. Some things we have to give up to experience salvation miracle. Amen. If you really want to be saved, some things you will have to give up. Some ideology that you're embracing have to be submitted at the feet of Christ. Some behavior have to be submitted. Before God, if we really want to have salvation. Amen. The greatest miracle of all time is what the young rich ruler walk away from. To inherit salvation, to free him from his sin. Nicodemus wanted salvation. He was a priest, but he wanted salvation. So not all priests have salvation. Not all priests are saved. Some of them not saved. Some of them need salvation. Nicodemus is a prime example. And if Nicodemus was one of the traditional priests of all times, imagine the priests today, our preachers today, or whoever they are today, proclaiming Christianity. Like I was coming this morning, I saw this van in front of me. Jesus' is love. And then the other sticker below is a foul language telling off one of the leaders of the world. Foul language. And, my, and I, was, I was just in the car. Oh my goodness. He is pretending to be a Christian because he's using the script, Christian scripture. It's up the top. But you look below the language that came after. So not all people who possess Christianity really are Christians. It's more like a culture. You know, some religion are culture, culture based. Well, the salvation of the Lord is not culture based, it comes from God. Jesus told Nicodemus, if you want salvation, you've got to be born of the water and of the Spirit. For, for Nicodemus, he thought that was an impossibility. How could I be born again? You mean I got to go back in my mother's womb the second time? Jesus. And be born. And Jesus, you know where the child is in the, the sock. In the woman's tummy. The sock full of water keeping that child safe. And when that sock is broken, the child has to make way out. And Nicodemus is thinking along that line. You mean I have to go back in the sock? <laughs> Salvation can be a difficult process for somebody. You mean I have to go back in my mother's womb the second time and then be born? Jesus said, no. You got to be born of the water. What is that? Baptism. God provides his water to cleanse us. Are to use as a as a public announcement that something happened in your heart towards God. There's a calling in your heart towards what is the purpose of water baptism? To make a public confession that I turn to God, and that's what Jesus wants Nicodemus to do: to make a public confession through the process of water. And this has to be entwined with the Spirit of God. He can't just decide to just go, go in the water and baptize. And say I'm a Christian. Or I'm following God. The work of God, the convicting power of the Holy Spirit would have to do something in your heart. That bring you to that state of guilt before God. 
that I am wrong and God is right and I must do something about it. Then I make a public confession in water that I'm, I am following the Lord. I'm a born again Christian. So the water is a symbol of, of public confession, praise God, that I've been, I have repented of sin and turned to God. And it is done through the power of the working of the Holy Spirit. Ain't talking about your baby baptism. That's a different story. That in our church we call it blessing. I'm talking about born again baptism. Where the person knows he or she is wrong. Before God and God is right. And I must do something about it. Glory to God here today. So I repented of my sin. Lord I'm sorry for the sins I've committed. Forgive me my trespasses. As I forgive those who trespass against me. Hallelujah to God. And I stepped out in the name of Jesus. Into that water in the name of Jesus. And baptized according to the commission that Jesus gave. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. To every creature. To every nation. Baptizing them in the Father. In the Son. And in the Holy Ghost. The agents of heaven. The agents of heaven is your new family. When you've been born again, somebody worship. Praise God. The agents of heaven is your new family that you just joined. When you receive salvation. Jesus said to Nicodemus, come down off your sycamore tree. For today, salvation abides. Somebody said abide. Abides in your heart. Abides in your mind. Abides in your rational thinking. Abides in your psyche. Abides in your schema. That, that place in your brain that receives and stores information. It abides. Salvation abides. You can remember you're a child of God. You know that you know that you know that the Lord forgive me of my sins. You know that you know that you know that you've been born again. By the spirit of God and the water. Somebody worship. Did Nicodemus ever do that? I, I, I don't come across. Anybody come across if Nicodemus have been baptized? I never come across it. I don't know what he did with that information. Or we find it too difficult. Through pride because he's a priest. He uphold the laws. Could he humble himself and go ask John or somebody or Jesus or what? One of the apostles to baptize Could he have humbled himself and give up his priest pride and been baptized? I think people, some people are just too proud to be baptized. They're too humble. But humble yourself under the mighty hands of God and get your baptism. You know, in some places when you're having the Lord's Supper, we're supposed to do feet washing. Some people don't do that. They calculate, am I going to be washing everybody's feet that walk in here? <laughs> but Jesus told Peter, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part with me. And if I do this to you, you must do it unto others. We are the church of Jesus and we are following the general. So whatever Jesus' church did, we are not making up a new church. We are following the apostles. Jesus, the chief cornerstone. Somebody worship. So this is Jesus' church. We believe in miracles. We believe in healing. We believe in salvation. We believe in repentance and baptism. And it's different from your baby baptism when they are blessed. Even if your baby been baptized at a young age, they need salvation baptism. And now the child grow up, the child needs to know I must tell God I'm wrong and he's, and he's right. Another miracle. Acts chapter 2, 1 to 13. Jesus told his disciples to go to Jerusalem and tarry until the Holy Ghost come. The promise of the Father come. You remember Joel the prophet in Joel chapter 2, 20. Said, God said in the last days I'll pour my spirit upon all flesh. I know it took place in Acts chapter 2. Just a couple days after Jesus. A few days after Jesus taken up into heaven. And they all were gathered together like how oh, we all gather in here to, together. And while they gathered together in the upper room, they had a church conference to, 
to appoint somebody to take the office of Judas. Because they had to be 12. The, the disciple knew Jesus won 12. 12. When 12 people are following you, you consider a leader back in those days. So Jesus need to have 12 people functioning for him. You know he had about 82 and 72 walk away. Something like that. 72 walk away because he said, if, unless you heat up my body and drink my blood, you, you cannot enter the kingdom every day. They walk away and left him only 12. So you had 12 to about 72 and see how many disciples that he chose but end up with 12 that were willing to follow him. So the Holy Ghost came and the people that saw what was taking place as the believers began to speak in tongues. They were shocked. They were amazed. How could these men speak in all the languages? Every one of us heard them speak in our languages. You read Acts chapter uh, 2 verse 1 to 30. It was a miracle. How could this be? They are Galileans. They speak, they speak Greek or Hebrews. How could they be speaking all these other languages? It's a miracle. So receiving the Holy Ghost, folks, was a miracle to those people who were listening. They were amazed. They were astonished. They were wondered. And that's what Jewel said, there will be wonders. We attend church because it's a means for us to assemble together. Because it's a command of scripture. Amen. The biblical terminology for miracle points to the idea of God's power at work to arouse people's wonder and amazement. There are three sets of terms that are employed to God at work which people's attention arouses to observe and pay attention, are they called miracle? One is a sign, which points to something other than which is less common. The sign itself is a miracle because it arouses people's amazement or awe and wonders. How could this be, Mary said, to the angel, how could I have a child and know not a man? And the angel said, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you of the eyes and shall overshadow you. Are you ready for the overshadowing of the Holy Spirit today? To do something special in your life? Something that you not even know of, but it pleases God. Are you ready for that? Luke 1, 34. For with my God... For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Luke 1, 34 to 38. Read through. With God, somebody say with God. With God. Nothing, nothing shall be impossible. The Bible tells that God himself caused that which seems it's impossible to take, to take a process in Mary's life. Having a child without Seen a man. Today, a woman can, I, I guess somebody, but pastor, people are having babies now without seeing a man. But you know that there is a process, right? Something has to be done. Remember magic? Something has to be done to get an outcome. For a woman to have a baby now, you got to go see your doctor, close the door, have some nurses around, and they have some tubes or something doing something to cause something, 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 so you could have that baby. But with God, just his power, breathe upon you, you have that child. No, 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 nothing, no, nothing frozen and taken out and all these apparatus. With God, all, somebody say all things. Are you ready for that all things today? Oh, have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Lord. Oh, God. Who is like you, O oh Lord, among the gods? Who is like you, majesty in holiness, terrible in glorious deeds, doing wonders. Exodus 15 verse 11. Psalms 136 say that God is the one who alone does great wonders. Psalm 72 18. Beware of false miracles. Exodus 7 11. Talk about the Pharaoh magicians that tried to work miracles. It was false. To act as if their God was real. Whoever they get their power from. False miracle. But God stepped in. 
and show real miracle. Simon the sorcerer in the city of Samaria amazed the people with his magic. Acts 8, 9 to 11. But when the believers, guess what? Philip went down and, and, and the, the people got saved through the preaching of the gospel. And were baptized and Simon baptized too. But what, what was taking place is that the other people were receiving the baptism of the Holy Spirit. And Simon did not receive that. And he attempted to buy, to purchase the Holy Spirit. You remember what Peter did to him? Repent! And probably God might forgive you. you because he saw what the Holy Ghost in people, what was taking place. Peter were getting healing. People were serving the Lord. People were moved. You know, in some community, the people are held by Simons. Held by their psyche. Can't do anything unless I talk to my psyche. Can't do anything unless I go to their magician. This is what people are living through today. You remember in Esther's days? When Haman wanted to terminate the Jews, he had all his magicians trying to choose the right day when, when to attack the Jews to kill them. But, but, but the, the plot was released to, to, to Mordecai. How you will hear today, folks? Hallelujah. And Mordecai sent a note to Hester in the palace and said, the Jew, Sir, Haman is about, am I calling the name right? Haman is about to kill the Jews and is seeking permission from King Asaros. You got to do something, Esther. And Esther doesn't know the king, my king is not somebody can go into and talk to like that. I have to have permission. I haven't seen him for 30 days. He doesn't call me in. So I got to, I can't do it. And, and, and Mordecai said, well, if you, how do you know that God did not send you into the palace for a time like this? Come on, folks. Hallelujah to God. How do you know that God did not call you into salvation? For a time like this to be a help to others. And Marik, Esther sent back a note and said, I'll do this. I'm going to go into fasting. That's what I know. Because traditionally, when you go through Esther's tradition, he said, I'm going to fast for three days. She understood the tradition of three days fasting. I'm going to get all my maids with me and we're going to fast and pray. And you ask all the Jews through Persia to fast and pray as well for three days. And after three days, he said, I'm going to go in to see the king. And if I perish, I perish. Oh, somebody worship today. <laughs> if I perish, I perish. And after three days, some things, folks, we've got to seek God's permission. Some miracle needs God's permission. Don't do it on your own. Seek God's permission for three days to fast and then pray. And then she dressed up. I think the, 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 the fasting tell her to dress up right. Going to see that she dressed so beautifully and stand out in the hallway where the king would see her as he sat in his throne. And he looked and said, oh my goodness, look at her. And held out his scepter so she could come. And Esther got the work done through fasting and prayer. And Almond magicians who cast lots to pick the, you know, Friday the 13th. That's why that's where it comes from. People don't like Friday the 13th. They say it's a bad luck because that's the day he picked to go terminate the Jews, Friday the 13th of October. But Harmon and all his magicians were hung, and his Harmon and his ten sons, the tide turned. And the king gave the Jews the authority to defend themselves that day. And read through scripture and see how many people died. How many people the, 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 the Jews put down. Because magic was worked to attack the people of God. And they turned it over and prayed to God. And God stepped in. The heart of the king. And Asaras gave them the power to fight back. Folks. The power of God is greater than any magic. And if you're living into a neighborhood where your children are not make it, making it and being held on by drugs and prostitution and your little kids walking around the street don't know where, what they're doing, their mind looks so complex, start using the weapon of fasting and prayer and appeal to divine power. Appeal to the heavens. 
Oh, praise God. Appeal to God to step in in your community and make a difference because your children are hooked by wicked powers. Spiritual wickedness in high places. Somebody, we need a miracle to change some community and see our children rise up and be what they're supposed to be. Oh, somebody worship here today. I know my sister has some kids uh, and she lives in a, in, a, in, a, in a community in, 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 in a particular country. And, and you, know, you know, those kids have a, have a hard time. And the minute I was talking to her yesterday, they just need to leave the community. They left the community and they're doing much better. And I've been into that community and I see what it is. Young men just walking. They've confused, hooked up on drugs. Uh, oh my God, they don't know where they're going. They, they sit on the street sides. They're just laying in the heat, sleeping. Drugs fill the community. These boys don't know their head from the toe and the girls as well. Uh, I remember we went to this church over there. You remember we went to the church over in, in, in New Jersey? And when we go on the street, we just see all these young people just stand there at this, the, 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 the store. Oh my goodness. Uh, it just come, You could just use your hand and just put them all in the church. Like that. You could just bring them all in. But they were so stoned. And my heart grieved. And I remember I was preaching in the church that night. It was a revival we left here to go do. That night I was preaching in the church and all of a sudden, thunder and storm and lightning came down in the district. And those who were hot, they have to come in. It, the church door was closed. And then the, 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 the wind or something, the church just burst open. They just walked in. I know some of them came to the altar, but they have no, I don't know if they know what's going on. My Lord, you need the power of God. Folks, in some areas to help our children. It's more than what you think. It's not just the drug. There are spiritual forces that are working. Where do you think these kids get these drugs from? They don't even grow, grow the plant. It's not even grow there. It comes from somewhere else. Somebody brought it in the country. How did they get it? Ask that question before we have our kids locked up in prison. All these years over drugs. How did they get it? How did it get there? Folks, we need a miracle to defeat the hormones of our community. Set our children free. Somebody worship here today. Somebody worship here today. Oh, praise God. Paul clearly tells us that in the end time, that those who work false miracles do so by the power of the devil. Amen. They do so by the power of the devil and they will not tell people the truth. They preach false doctrine. They preach false gospel. They will pretend that they can heal people and give blessing and good luck. But it is false. You need a good luck from God. You need a miracle from God. Choose God to be your psychics. Oh glory be to God because you will never fail. You ain't got to pay him no money. Somebody worship here today. Somebody worship here today. If you're a sport figure, give your heart to God. Oh, glory be to God. If you're a singer, give your heart to God. Don't owe him any money. And sing unto the Lord in the spirit. And watch a change begin to take place in our community. Somebody worship. Miracles still work. But the people, the properties of God must call out to God. Call out to God for your miracle. Call out to God for your change. Somebody say change. Change will come, but you need some prayer warriors, some Esthers, who will get in prayer and fasting and call the people in the community to fast and pray until all walls of the enemy has been destroyed and torn down and the people are set free. Your little boys and girls can walk with their head up high rather than hooked on all types of nonsense drugs. Somebody worship here today. But we need a miracle from God. Because the community is under Simon's watch. People walk in your community and curse your community. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, every, everything that put up itself against the children of God is torn down this day. Somebody worship. 
Amen. Pull down strongholds, perils in the name of Jesus. Use the name of Jesus. God gave us a name higher than any name. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. The magician and, and the psychic shall bow before God. Somebody worship here today. The hope your man shall bow before God. Every knee, somebody's every knee. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Your whole man will be defeated, but Jesus' people lives on. Somebody worship. Somebody worship. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, <laughs> glory to God in the highest. There are some people tied up and bungled up and you need to loose up. Loose up and get rid of some of those little gods you have in your positions. Oh, somebody worship here today. And when I said worship, I ain't talking about lift me up. I'm saying help me break the barriers. When I said praise the Lord, I mean when you praise God in this type of message, you're breaking the barriers. But if you sit down and keep your mouth closed, then Satan working in you. You got to praise God to break the barrier. That's what I'm talking about when I said worship. When we begin to worship, when the saints begin to pray, then the Lord shall have his way. Worship the Lord this hour. Let him have his praise out of your mouth. Somebody worship. Somebody glorify God. That's what Jesus wanted, sister. Read when he went to raise Lazarus so God would be glorified. Are you ready to glorify God in your miracle today? There's a miracle taking place. But we need the people to begin to have for your praise. You know, sometimes you're preaching and, and the devil works and the pastor starts to say something wrong to run the people. You know Satan do that? You're preaching and the devil is giving you, entering for you to say something wrong so the people would walk away. Wicked. Satan, when you begin to step into spiritual realm, that's when the devil become prime. Somebody worship. When Daniel begins to pray and touch the spiritual realm, what happened? God sent the answer. But there was a spirit in the community that blocked God's angel from delivering the message to Daniel. Can you understand that? Can you imagine that? That God sent his angel with the answer to Daniel, but there was a stronger spirit living in the community that blocked Daniel's message. How did Daniel get the, the 21 days fasting? That is why you do not use 21 days fasting for exercise. You know you have some religious group talking about you to send money and do 21 days fast and that's demonic. That's the devil work. Don't use Daniel's 21 days fasting for exercise and lose weight. Because you knew what happened. His answer was blocked by a spirit. And God had to send Michael with the answer. And it's when Michael showed up and Daniel Okay, said God sent the answer to you, Daniel, 21 days ago. But there's a spirit in the community. And it's only Michael can handle those spirits. Somebody worship here today. God of an angel. For he shall give his charge over his people. Oh, somebody worship here. Oh, help. Let's break through the barrier. Uh, uh, when I said worship, I don't want you to clap me. I want you to help me break through the barrier. Because when the saints begin to pray. Then the Lord shall have his way. I don't care if you clap. I shout hallelujah when I'm preaching. I'm going to preach anyway. But when I ask you to praise God, help me break the barrier. Because we are in the spiritual realm where something is taking place. But when the people of God begins to worship and praise in God, Satan will be conquered. Rise on your feet and begin to worship. We are touching something today. We are touching some spiritual realm today. Oh, begin to worship. Begin to worship. We, we are touching some unknown areas today. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, when Michael showed up for the body of Moses, Satan was there. Wanted the body of Moses. God I did not take chance with any of the other angels this time. He sent Michael. And when Michael saw Satan showing up for the body of Mo Moses, he said, the Lord rebuke thee. You know what? Don't let me take you on. It's not your time, it's not my time yet. But the Lord rebuked thee and he took Moses' body into heaven. Folks, when you, when you are a Christian, that's when all holes break loose. 
When you fill up the Holy Ghost, that's when all hosts break loose to mess you up so you don't serve God. When Jesus, after Jesus ready for his ministry, he was taken up into the wilderness to be tempted of the... Oh, 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 oh Lord, have mercy here today. Miracle. Let me wrap this thing up. Miracle. Somebody said miracle. Jesus was led by the Spirit. Up into the mountain by the Spirit. To be tempted of the devil. But he had the victory. He had the victory. Man shall not live by bread alone. But every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Oh somebody worship here today. You shall only worship the Lord thy God and no other person. Oh, somebody worship here today. Give God the praise. Can you praise God? Can you give him the glory? Can you give God the glory? Can you give him the glory? Some Lazarus going to rise up today. Some sick bones going to be healed today. But can you start giving God the glory? Some breakthrough going to take place today. But you have to start giving God the glory. Jesus defeats Satan. And the angel after ministered to him. You have an angel. But you got to defeat the devil. And you only can do it in the name of the Lord. Oh, glory be to God. I, I'm going to stop here today. The message continues. Somebody start worshiping. Yes, sir. Yeah. Miracle is still available. Anybody wants your miracle today? Is there a miracle that you need? You've been going to your doctor. You have a question that cannot be answered. But you know the God that you know that you know can deliver you. Lift your hands and begin to praise God like a child. Oh, hallelujah. Going around the walls of Jericho. Start praising your God. Hey, 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 hey. Start worshiping. Miracle still. You can't be saved, man. You can be saved. You can worship God, man. Yes, sir. But it takes miracle for some people. Are you sick? I know one of my sisters is sick down here with a, with a pain in the knee. I speak to your healing in the name of Jesus Christ. At Nazareth, your knees, your ankle bones shall come back together in the name of Jesus. But begin to praise God. And all the people saw him walking and praising God. Yeah. Send on your rain, Lord. Shower me, Lord. Shower me, Lord. Shower me, Lord, with your blessing. Amen. Glory to God. Shower me with your blessing. Oh, glory to God. Shower me with your blessing. Woo. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know that song? The great speckled bird of the beautiful father. I'm thinking if you bring that blue song book in there for me and look for that great speckled bird. Amen. Glory to God. Somebody worship. We are the speckled bird of God. How are you a speckled bird today? Somebody worship. What a beautiful thought I'm thinking. Concerning the great church of God. She's spreading her wings for the journey. She's spreading her wing by and by. Oh, praise be the name of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Is anybody sick among us today? Anybody sick? Lift your hands right where you are and believe. Father, in the name of Jesus. I pray for your body, these properties that stand here today. I pray that you will heal them from the crown of the head to the sole of the feet. Praise God. From the, from the crown of the head to the sole of the feet. I pray for the healing of your mouth. I know that you had a surgery on your mouth today, my sister. But I pray in the name of Jesus that you will quickly receive your healing 
and continue to speak as God would have you to. Chronic pain that keep rocking your body. I pray in the name of Jesus for you that you will be healed and be made whole. Glory be to God. I pray that the questions that you have in your heart that you have in sleepless night about may God bring you the answer. Somebody worship here. May God bring you the answer. For I know the answer is on the way. Praise God. If God, people will humble themselves and pray. The answer will come. The answer is coming. Hey Amen. Your desire for your family, your husband. God is hearing your prayer. And he's going to make a breakthrough for you. For your children. Don't stop praying. For the God you serve, love them. And he's going to cause a breakthrough for you. Amen. And amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Sister Merle, you know the song, I know the answer is on the way. Yeah, come sing that for me. I know the answer is on the way. If God, people, amen. Praise the Lord. Help me, I know you, I heard that song first, sung with you. I know the answer. Praise God. Help me sing that song. Hallelujah. The answer is on the way. Answers on the way. This I know. My Jesus did it. He did it again. On again. I know the answers on the way. This I know. My Jesus did it. He did it again. This I know. If God's people, if God's people will humble themselves and pray, I know the answer is on the way. This I know. Oh, I know the answer is on the way. This I know. Jesus said it and I believe it. This I know. If God's people will humble themselves and pray, I know the answers on the way. This I know. Oh, I know the answers on the way. This I know. I said it and I believe it. This I know. If God's people will humble themselves and pray I know the answers on the way this I know oh I know the answers on the way this I know if God's people will humble themselves and pray I know the answers on the way this I know Jesus said it, and I believe it. This I know. One more time. The other answer is on the way. This I know. If God's people will humble themselves and pray. Jesus said it, and I believe it. This I know. If God's people self and pray. God bless you today and God keep you. Your miracle is just about to happen. But you must keep your eyes on Jesus. Yes.
Peter had his eyes on Jesus when he saw him walking on the water and desired to walk on the water. By faith, he just leaped out on the water to Jesus, not thinking about the surface or the properties of the water. All his eyes were just in Jesus. He just wanted to hug Jesus because he saw him. But the moment he came back to himself and realized what he was doing, he started to sing. Just turn it over to Jesus. That's what Mary and Martha did. They turned over their situation to Jesus. Miracles still work. And I'm hearing some testimonies coming out of Ukraine from some of the soldiers. It's amazing you how they prayed. And they got delivered from the battlefield, man. You should listen. These are testimonies coming from people in, in the battlefield. And the one guy said, you know, I was sitting on my, on my hospital. I thought I was going to die. When I got shot, he saw light. But he began to pray. And he said, he, he get to understand his church people were playing, praying too. The little church, the church he grew up in, they were praying too. And he's alive. Miracles still work. There was another testimony here coming out that uh, the, the army, Russian army coming and the, 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 the people start to pray. And they don't see... A uh, bomb just flying on the Russian armies. You should listen to some of the testimony. So wherever they, those, those bombs come from, but destroy the, 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 the Russian army, people pray. So we know that people are still praying and are seeing miracles. But there's more miracle to come. Just in the minute and the hour of your death, God can work your miracle. And even right now, your miracle is coming. May God bless you today. And be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I will try to get that song the next time, The Great Speckled Bird. God bless you. God you. Amen. I, no, because I don't have the words. I don't want to mess it up. But at this time, we have some announcement coming up. And I just wanted to uh, stay for a little bit. We have a new program coming up called Launch Out. And it's to help people achieve some, some goals.